In February 1987, ABC aired the 14-and-a-half-hour, seven-episode TV miniseries, America, starring Chris Christopherson as a descendant in the United States ten years after a bloodless takeover by the Soviet Union. Most Americans scoffed at the idea that the Soviet Union could so easily defeat the United States militarily, and the country would so willingly surrender in a bloodless takeover. Reality rejected the premise of America the TV Man series with the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 and the Soviet Union collapsing in 1992. America and its Western allies won the Cold War. Communism was dead, and a new world order came into existence. America, the TV miniseries, aired 31 years ago. America today has a dysfunctional government with a divided political party in power. Stands alone on the international stage, surrounded by pissed-off allies and gleeful enemies. And a compromised president who all but surrendered America to a former Soviet Union spy man. America is more at risk for a real bloodless takeover by Russia in 2018 than it did from the fictional Soviet Union in 1987. My name is Steve Reimer and welcome to my channel. Please comment, like, and subscribe and click on the notification bell to see more videos like this. I won't be deep diving into America the TV miniseries because the TV Guide called it, quote, arguably the most boring miniseries in a decade, unquote. Never mind that America, the TV miniseries, was the second highest rated miniseries in the 1986-87 television season. How did the fictional Soviet Union win a bloodless takeover of the United States and America, the TV miniseries? While the ministry does not show how the United States was defeated, the backstory explains how America became a Soviet Union client state and occupied by a United Nations peacekeeping force. EMP warheads on ballistic missiles were supposedly detonated over the continental United States to prevent the military command and control systems from launching a nuclear counterstrike and militarily isolating the United States from the rest of the world that made surrender all but inevitable. There are three points to consider about this backstory. First, no nation then or now has the ability to launch ballistic missiles at America without the U.S. military knowing that they were coming. Under a typical nuclear war scenario, the military would have at least five minutes to launch a counterstrike before the first wave of enemy warheads detonate. With 60,000 warheads in 1987, and 16,000 warheads in 2018. Nuclear war was called mutually assured destruction, or MAD, for a reason. Second, U.S. military electrical systems are hiding against EMP attacks. A successful first wave strike of EMP warheads was unlikely to completely disable the military command and control systems. Civilian electrical systems are not hiding against EMP attacks and a widespread EMP attack would destabilize society much more effectively. Unprotected civilian electrical systems are a well-known infrastructure problem that neither the government nor electrical operators want to pay for. Some experts have speculated that the reason why the North Korean missiles explode in mid-flight is because it's not designed to deliver a nuclear warhead from point A to point B, but to explode an EMP warhead over an American city. Third, isolating the continental United States from the rest of the world was unrealistic. If the U.S. military around the world was cut off from the United States, I'm quite certain that plans exist to reestablish contact and carry out a counterstrike. A wave of EMP warheads exploding over the continental United States would not have gone unnoticed by America's allies. Even if the Soviet Union was successful in taking the United States without a fight, it would not be a bloodless takeover as no American would ever accept the presence of United Nations peacekeepers. How does the United States go from winning the Cold War with the Soviet Union in 1992 to virtually surrendering to the Russians in 2018? 
A divided political party sacrifices long-held principles to nominate a compromised presidential candidate backed by Russian haggers. Voters vote for a compromised candidate over an experienced candidate with a proven track record but with 30 years of political baggage. A quirk in the electoral college system allows a compromised candidate to win the election despite losing the popular vote by 3 million votes. A compromised president praises our enemies and tears down our allies, salutes enemy generals and refuses to visit overseas troops, and casually disregards the international institutions and treaties that made the world a safer place for over 70 years. America, the TV miniseries, ended on a down note with collaborators and resistance leaders ending up dead. Unable to prevent the Soviet Union from dissolving the United States into smaller client states. Will that be the fate of America in 2018 and beyond? Leave a comment below with your answer. Thank you for watching.